Hello and welcome to this video about forward rates, forward rate agreements, FRA and swaps. For this video I planned the following. I would like to start with forward rates and forward rate agreements and then I would like to go into swap agreements. Now let us start with the first forward rates and forward rate agreements. A forward rate is an interest rate that can be locked in now, but that applies to a future point in time. The opposite of the forward rate is the spot rate, which applies immediately for a certain term. So, we denote the forward rate by F with a small cap T, which denotes the point of time when the forward is agreed, it might be this point here, and T1 is the starting point um, at which the loan will be held, and T2 is the end point of the payback, the maturity. So we agree on the forward rate in time T, but a loan is taken at time capital T1 to capital T2. Accordingly, the forward rate, which is agreed now in time T, uh, is for a loan held from T1 to T2. And we denote this forward rate F012 if it is a forward rate uh, that is agreed now starting in one year, ending in two years. The forward rate can be calculated from the spot interest rate at different maturities. So from the interest rate structure or yield curve. The forward interest rates are implicitly contained in the current interest rate structure. They are therefore so-called implicit interest rates. Note that the forward rate naturally depends on the chosen interest method and the chosen day count convention. Why is that the case? The relationship between spot interest rates and forward interest rates is easily explained. In arbitrage free markets, it does not matter whether money is invested for two periods, starting in small cap T, ending in capital T2, or if it is invested for a spot rate, starting in small cap T, ending in capital T1, and additionally is invested for the future for the forward rate starting in t1 and ending in t2 so since this is the case both investment alternatives need to end up at the same future value so, if we can achieve the future value, which is composed of the principal and the compounding factor, and this is the compounding factor for the spot rate, for the two-year spot rate that we see here. So, investing money here, getting it back here. So, this is our first alternative. And of course, we have to compound for two periods since it, since it is two years. Or the alternative, investing for a spot rate for one year and then take the forward year and get, the, get back the money in T2. So here we see the compounding of the principal times the compounding factor for the spot rate R1 times the compounding factor for the future uh, rate. And in arbitrage free markets, both have to end up in the same future value. If this was not the case, an arbitrager would be able to use the more profitable alternative to invest money, 
and the less profitable alternative to borrow money, and thereby he would achieve an arbitrage profit. If we put this into general terms, we can shorten out the x, so we only have the um, compounding factors left, and we just replace all spot rates by a future rate term uh, that starts uh, that is agreed upon in zero and that starts in zero. So this is a spot rate too, just written as a forward rate. Same applies here. So if we put this into general terms, this is the same but generalized for any uh, points of time. And if we now um, rearrange this formula and um, isolate isolate the future rate, we can easily calculate using this formula that is the same as here, just rearranged. Um, we can easily calculate the future rate from the given spot rates, from the given yield curve. Now, what is a forward rate agreement? A forward rate agreement is an over-the-counter interest rate forward transaction, which is a derivative, and that allows an interest rate to be hedged for a future investment period. Over-the-counter means not stock-listed, but um, a one-person-to-one -one person agreement. It's, it is not traded at the stock. The agreement does not cover the actual investment or borrowing, only an exchange of interest payment is agreed. In terms of market price, however, a forward rate agreement is essentially equivalent to an agreement to invest or borrow money in the future. The money market future is a transaction similar to the forward rate agreement on futures exchanges. Let us come to the interest rate swaps. In an economic sense, a swap is a collective term for a derivative financial instrument whose common feature is an exchange of future cash flows. Beneath the interest rate swap, there are a plentitude of other swaps, like asset swaps, credit default swaps, foreign exchange swaps, equity swaps, and so on and so forth. Swaps are also over-the-counter transactions. Nevertheless, swaps are standardized financial contracts that can be contracted on the basis of the model contracts of the International Swaps and Derivatives Association, ISDA. The contracts determine how payments are to be calculated and the terms of maturities. An interest rate swap is an interest rate derivative in which two parties agree to exchange interest payments on fixed notional amounts at certain future dates. Interest payments are usually fixed in such a way that the one party pays a fixed interest rate, that is called the fixed lag, fixed when the contract is concluded, while the other party pays a variable interest rate, which is called variable lag, the variable interest rate is usually based on a reference interest rate in interbank business, like LIBOR or Euribor or something like that. The signing of a swap can also be considered as the exchange of two bonds. Both bonds have the same nominal value, but one has a fixed interest rate and the other a variable interest rate. Accordingly, swaps are also valued in the same way as the sum of two bond transactions. The value of the swap transaction is determined by the present value of the swap 
fixed lag in time zero is the present value of the variable bond minus the present value of the fixed bond. For the fixed rate payer and vice versa for the variable rate payer. The variable bond in this calculation will not deviate significantly from its par value due to the constant interest rate adjustment during the term. Interest rate swaps are usually contracted at current market conditions. This means that the current yield curve is used as the basis. It follows that the value of the swap at the time of conclusion is zero for both parties. Furthermore, there is no exchange of the agreed nominal value, as otherwise both parties would have to pay each other the same sum. Only the interest payments are exchanged. Accordingly, interest rates rate swaps do not bear any credit default risk or only a little credit default, ri default risk if, uh, since these payments are not exchanged. Thank you for watching this video and see you in the next video.